Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. In today's special episode, we sat down with Rex Lee, cybersecurity advisor at MySmart Privacy, to learn more about the energy revolution. How is the Chinese regime benefiting from the green energy effort being pushed in America? How are big oil companies rebranding themselves to get government benefits? And where does all this leave the consumer? Rex Lee, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thank you, Tiffany, for having me. Rex, you just came back from an energy conference that kind of covers, you know, our green energy movement and maybe our dependence on China. What was the biggest takeaway from this conference? Well, the energy conference is uh, Sierra Week, and it's held every year in Houston, and it's the energy industry uh, overall. It's uh, renewable, uh, clean, green energy, fossil fuels. Uh, it's it's all energy. And it, and it hosts some of the most powerful people on the planet. Uh, this year's uh, uh, speakers, for instance, uh, the keynote speakers were John Podesta, uh, Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, and John Kerry. Uh, a couple of years ago, as Mike Pompeo spoke at this conference, and the conference has all the uh, CEOs for all of the uh, energy companies there, whether it's utility, oil and gas, renewable, and so forth. Um, and uh, I got to sit in on uh, John Podesta's keynote address, and it was really interesting because um, uh, he's addressing the conference, which in the audience you have renewable energy CEOs and uh, fossil fuel CEOs. And um, he was talking about the uh, uh, green uh, initiative money associated with the Inflation Reduction Act and the omnibus bill, which came out to, with both both uh, legislations, it's over $500 billion of taxpayer money that's set aside for green initiatives. He referred to that money, this is really interesting, he referred to that money as government-enabled investment, which meant that uh, uh, any company that was in the audience, including oil and gas companies like Shell, Exxon, and so forth, Chevron, um, could qualify for that money, money they, they could qualify for that money as long as they had investments in green uh, energy initiatives like hydrogen and so forth. And all of the major oil companies are doing this. As a matter of fact, they're rebranding themselves from big oil to big energy, uh, which means that they're going to qualify to uh, get uh, part of that $500 billion dollar uh, of Omnibus and Inflation Reduction Act money for green initiatives. And on that note, with the big oil companies basically rebranding, it seems we're seeing a lot of discussion and debate over, say, banning gas stoves. So how would this rebranding play into all of this? Well, you know, what's interesting is Chevron went from being Chevron Oil to now they're Chevron, the human energy company, and all the other companies are following suit. Uh, if you notice that the Biden administration's uh, energy policy hasn't been very friendly to, to fossil fuels, and we've had high gas prices as a result, but yet we don't see really any uh, oil and gas CEOs um, in mainstream media or on shows really discussing the Biden administration's policies because they're qualifying for this money um, through that. So this means that the taxpayers are actually paying for this. Uh, so, you know, if, if there's a policy for instance, that reduces the dependency on uh, natural gas for gas stoves, for instance, uh, these companies would stand to benefit if that was replaced by hydrogen or another alternative energy form to replace uh, the gas stoves. So they're, they're in a position today where they're gonna make money both ways uh, because a lot of these uh, oil and gas companies are uh, investing in green energy pro uh, projects, big ones. And they have more money than anybody. So kind of like what you see in, in big tech, where I'll give you an example where Facebook knew that they were facing stiff competition from Instagram. Well, rather than compete against Instagram, they bought Instagram. We see this today with uh, uh, a chat, uh, um, um, with AI chatbots um, and uh, in regards to uh, open source which had uh, chat GPT, uh, that has now been purchased by or invested in by Microsoft. So whenever there's a competitive technology out there, these, these, main, these large uh, corporations, some of whom can be considered monopolies, simply just buy the competition. And I think we're gonna see that in the green energy sector as Exxon 
uh, Chevron and uh, and other uh, energy giant, you know, oil and gas giants become energy giants. And speaking of the green energy, it seems, you know, China has really cornered a lot of that market. So how did China come into play at this conference? Well, what's funny is uh, John Podesta, during his uh, keynote address, uh, mentioned that we need to decouple with China as we migrate from fossil fuels to uh, clean and green energy. Um, and he didn't really use a really good example because he said that uh, for instance, uh, there was a new uh, electronic vehicle battery factory that was being uh, built in the United States in Michigan. Well, a colleague of mine, Merle Garrison, uh, had mentioned to me that that factory was actually owned by a Chinese company um, a, in partnership with Ford Motor. And the factory was initially going to be built in uh, Virginia, but Governor uh, Youngkin didn't want the factory built there because of the company's ties uh, to China, and that uh, company is uh, CALT, uh, which is a Chinese uh, battery manufacturing company. So yes, he's right in one instance that, yeah, we need to bring jobs back to America, and that green energy jobs, um, investment in green energy in America will mean more jobs. But uh, in that one example that he used, um, uh, you know, you know the, the, it's like reading the fine print of a contract. The factory was owned by a company from China in partnership with Ford. So you can say that Ford is building the factory, but in reality, it's a Chinese company. And it seems when we talk about the green energy, another part that often comes up with electric vehicles is lithium mining. And it seems there's some efforts to maybe start that production in America. I think Nevada is one state where that's playing out. So what yes. can you tell us about that? So the Green, green Energy Initiative in uh, Nevada is associated with Thacker Pass. And uh, it's a big, huge, it's going to be a big, huge uh, lithium mine. Um, and again, this was brought up not only by John Podesta, but Jennifer Granholm also spoke at Sierra Week. She also spoke at South by Southwest in Austin, which I covered as well. And I'll, I'll give you a little insight on what she had to say. But uh, they both brought up that, uh, that the uh, Biden administration is approving more leases for rare earth mineral mining in the United States. And lithium uh, is the new oil. Um, uh, but the other, the, the flip side of that is uh, lithium mines are not very environmental friendly. Uh, and there are protests not only in the United States rising up, but they're also rising up in Chile and other places around the world. Uh, and and you, you see one thing in common with these protests is that you have environmental groups uh, protesting uh, mining companies that are mining for uh, green energy uh, and clean energy, uh, rare earth mineral mines like cobalt, and uh, lithium. And what's going on in Thacker Pass, again, uh, you know, both of them brought that up as an example. Well, there's protests going on uh, right now um, with uh, American uh, Native Indian groups, as well as uh, environmental groups who formed together to protest, uh, protest this, but yet you don't see this on TV. Now, remember the Keystone um, Pipeline? Uh, when uh, it was going through lands um, uh, that were owned by Native Americans, there were protests. Uh, and those protests not only were, are, were headline news in the United States, but around the world. Yet we don't see that same, um, uh, we don't see that same focus on these protests that are going on with these environmental groups or Native American Indians when it comes to green energy. But if it was oil and gas or fossil fuels, I could guarantee you that the Thacker Pass uh, protest uh, would be would also be uh, featured uh, uh, na nationwide, and you would see it uh, in magazines and newspaper uh, headlines, as well as uh, featured on mainstream media. But you don't see that in this case. That was Rex Lee, cybersecurity advisor at MySmart Privacy. And after a break, we continue our coverage with him on what U.S. energy policy should look like going forward. Our full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you soon.